What does it mean to be living in Laodicea? Revelation 3 prophesies that the church in the last days would be apathetic, poor, thinking it's rich, but uh, have very little spiritual connection with God. We brought a pastor, Bob Russell, an expert, a teacher of teacher and a pastor of pastors, to tell us what our churches can do to help them grow in their real relationship with Jesus Christ and not get sucked into the world. So we got Bob Russell here. He was formerly pastor of Southeast Christian Church. Bob, so glad you could join Tim and me here on Prophetic Perspectives. Thank you. Good to be with you, Nathan and Tim. What do you think about the church today? Do you see that the Laodicean church as prophesied in Revelation 3 is a prophecy, and are we living in the Laodicean age? Well, there's a tremendous apostasy taking place in uh, churches of all denominations. Uh, there's a doctrinal apostasy. Uh, I, I read several months ago that Harvard University has appointed a, uh, an atheist as their head chaplain. And they say, how in the world can we get there when Harvard was started for the, the truth of preaching Jesus Christ? But gradually over time, uh, doctrinally, we get absorbed by the world and it's incredible that we do a 180 degree turn doctrinally. And, and churches are, are absorbing the moral values of the world. Who, who would have ever thought? that in churches we would perform same-sex marriages and in, endorse behavior that the, the Bible calls uh, detestable. And uh, who'd ever thought that in the church that, that we would uh, have ceremonies that uh, glamorize divorce and uh, just treat it as the, the Bible talks about Ahab, the king in the Old Testament, treated the sins of Israel as though they were trivial. And we take this cavalier attitude towards scripture and towards sin. And as a result, uh, the church loses its power. I try to encourage preachers, just preach through the Bible and just be the mail carrier. Just deliver what the word of God says. And there is tremendous power when God's word is preached. It may mean that you lose a few people, but God will purge the church and sanctify the church. And in the end, you'll be more, more effective. I, I think the church of the future that is going to be effective is going to be less concerned about numbers and more concerned about health. Certainly so. I, here's a question, Bob. I know that you deal with pastors, you mentor them, you have a tremendous ministry to, uh, to be a pastor to pastors, and certainly there is a, a need for pastors to stand firm on the Word of God. For our viewers today who say, well, I'm at a church that has been drifting for years, perhaps a denomination that has drifted, what would you advise to them not only protect their own families, their children and grandchildren, but should they stay in a, in a church, in a local body that has drifted and that has allowed so much of the world to indoctrinate, or should they go elsewhere? I'm asked a lot from people who will email me, I'm a part of a church that is drifting away, should I leave? And I don't think there's an easy answer to that. Sometimes uh, we need to stay and do our best to redirect the church and be a positive influence in the church. There are two factors that would, two most important factors. One is, have you sat down and talked with the leaders of the church? Sometimes if you'll talk with the preacher or the, the elders or the lay leaders of the church, they will realize that they've not been perceptive enough and they will make adjustments and you can continue to stay in the church and be a positive influence on some of the people who maybe not as well grounded. But the second big part is, do you have children? And I, I would not keep my children in a church that was not sound biblically and morally, and because they are going to be impacted in such a short period of time. So I, I think if you're in a church and you've talked with the leadership and they're not willing to make an adjustment and you have children, then you need to find a Bible believing church where you can be reinforced. That's a tough move to make, but if you can't find one, then start one, get a group meeting in your home and study the Bible and become a small group church. Well, Bob, how do you see us get from the Church of Philadelphia, which prophesied a great time of evangelism and growth, to the point where we're the Laodicean now? How did we get 
from being so energetic to being so apathetic? Well, I think we discount the fact that Satan is alive and well, and Satan hates a growing evangelistic Bible-believing church, and he is going to do his best to undermine it. And the end, we've got the world, the flesh, and the devil fighting us. And uh, in 40 years of ministry, I saw that again and again. And uh, the, the natural inclination is to deterioration. And the leaders of the church have to be on guard at all times to try to keep coming back to the truth, to keep standing for God's word, keep preaching what, what the Bible says. God honors that, but uh, the evidence is all around us that uh, we, we, we regress if we're not uh, vigilant at all times. I think the, the lesson from the last book of the Bible prior to Revelation is also critical. Jude, who is wanting to write about all sorts of things dealing with the gospel, he says in verse 3, felt compelled to write appealing that the, his readers and even us today contend earnestly for the faith. Uh, once for all handed down to the saints. So whether we're a pastor, whether we are a lay leader, an elder, or a member of a church, uh, all of us have a responsibility to contend earnestly, certainly to do that within our home. And so we pray that, that this will be an encouragement for us to stand firm for the, again, the uh, doctrine and for the faith that has been handed down to us from the Word of God. You know, the Bible says, watch your life and your doctrine closely. Uh, if you can't read the Bible without realizing that details matter. Little things matter. And when you see the first indication of slippage, uh, some, somebody needs to stand up and speak the truth. Speak the truth in love, but, but don't be careless and, and allow things to slip away. Thank you, Bob. Well, folks, if you're in a church where you see it slipping doctrinally, Heed Pastor Russell's advice, talk to the pastor, talk to the elders, see if you make a change, but you have to protect your children and your family as well. So thank you, Bob Russell. We so appreciate it. How can people get in touch with your ministry? They just go to my website, bobrussell.org. Bob uh, I write a blog every week and there's some information on that that can help them. 